Hello everyone, this is Kieran Kent. Today's uh, recording is chapter five. Chapter five is financial position and cash flow. Um, you have seen a, a statement of financial position before. Another way of saying, another name for a financial position is balance sheet. And we're gonna be doing cash flow. Under cash flow, there's two methods of doing this cash flow. We're gonna be learning both. So that's what our topic is today. First, we're going to talk about statement of financial position, and then we're going to go into our uh, our cash flow statements. So when we think of a statement of financial position, what it does is it what it does is it provides what does it provide? It provides information to who the users. So in other words, um, it provides information about liquidity and solvency. Um, Th those are the ratios that we work out when we think of a liquidity is that we think of it uh does the company has enough um enough um it has enough to cover their short-term liability do they have enough uh liquid assets that that can pay their short-term liability then we think of a when we think of a solvency when it, do do they have the ability to pay the debt and related interest so now that's what that's what the difference between the both is that now when we're going further is saying uh what also does the statement of financial position provides information about details about the company's financial st structure in other words they're they're talking about more of a, a financial flexibility that's what they're looking at it when we think of it how high degree of uh, financial flexibility better uh, they're better the company's better to uh, is able to survive better in the bad times that's what we mean so uh, they, if they have a high degree of uh, financial flexibility uh they're able to survive uh in 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 the bad times now when we're going it also statement of financial position uh, is also used to assess the credit worth uh worthiness what do, do what do we mean by that um ability to serve service the debt do have do they have the ability to service the debt the other one is debt to at or at the debt to asset ratio higher uh, the ratio higher the debt higher the risk uh, to the bank um, so when we think of, of a bankruptcy higher the risk um, higher higher the risk and higher the chances of uh, going bankrupt when when we think of a, a debt if your debt is more your assets are less that means they're unable to pay their debt now and then what we're going to be learning about is a statement of cash flow that can be used to assess earnings quality so the quality of the earnings will depends on the cash flow statement now earning what it could do is it can uh, it can um, avoid the manipulation of earnings and then what happens in net income significantly significantly higher than the cash flow from up from operations so what do we mean by that the net income that we calculate um, it's accrual accounting when we do a cash flow we need to convert that net income into cash accounting before we could do that issuance of uh, shares to offset negative cash flow something sometimes the company has a negative cash flow in order to make it positive what they can do is they can issue new shares to manipulate the um, financial statements that's what they could do um, going forward uh, this is they're saying statement of financial position is also known as a balance sheet so that's another name SP calls a, a balance sheet where the uh, statement of uh, uh, or IFRS calls a statement of financial positions. The same thing is known as a balance sheet under the ASPE method. Do we put, do anything different? No, there is not a uh, difference. There's many, uh, when we think of it, I already talked about uh, how it's useful, um, useful for assessing the company's liquidity and solvency. Um, it, it just tells you that the company has the ability to pay their debt and the liquidity is time until asset is realized or or liability has to be paid now when we think of a, a, a statement of financial position when we think of it there is a, always going to be many assets and liability are stated at historical uh, historical cost so if you think about an asset and a liability they are normally uh, represented in the statement of financial position at a historical cost uh, information is presented is reliable this is good information historical cost is good however if those those assets are reported at the fair value they're more relevant um, re reporting at a current fair value would result in more relevant information 
Now, the second thing is statement of financial position. The, the second limitation is that judgment and estimates are used. So, of course, professional judgment is used when we're producing our uh, estimates and then also uh, the management decides uh, what estimate uh, to 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 what estimate to use. Uh, for example, writing off something. Um, so writing off a accounts receivable or writing off an inventory. So those are all dependent on the uh, on the management's judgment. Now, when we think of it, in, when we there's two type of numbers. There's soft numbers and there is a hard numbers on the uh, when we talk about statement of financial position. When we talk about soft numbers, soft numbers are any number that arrived. Uh, to from the estimate so any number that we arrived um, number a, a many soft number slash estimates are included that could be significantly uncertain if any number is uncertain they will be called soft number if they're not they're not uncertain they call the hard numbers um, a statement of financial position does not report items that cannot be recorded objectively so if something cannot be um, reported uh, if they cannot does not report so any item we don't record them if um, if we cannot uh, uh, if if we we don't record it if we cannot measure them in other words um, the example is internally generated goodwills so when we think of an internally ge ge generated goodwill is that goodwill is the um is we want to know how good the company is doing in in the community so how do we measure that uh, sometimes measured on according to the customer sometimes measure on how much we sell so it's some if it's internally generated means that the company will record this this goodwill as a higher uh, when it is actually is so that's why it is uh, it, uh, then any goodwill that is gener that is calculated using internal uh, calculated internally they are not reported on the incomes uh, on the statement of financial position when we think of a, a statement of finan financial position classification when we are doing a classification so now similar items are classified means they are grouped together with subgroup totals so now if you if you think about it we have a current asset so and under the current assets there's different type of current assets but then we have a non-current assets they have a super different uh different uh groups they're grouped together the other one is property planted and they are with they are used with the subtotal so those are some of the things that uh, we are going to be looking at it when we prepare our statement of financial position now when we think of it um the what why do we need to do this individuals Individual SPF items should be reported separately and in sufficient de details in order to. So why do we need to do this? Why do we need to group together? Why do we need to do report them separately? Um, so what? Why do we need to do that? It allows users uh, to assess the amount, timing, and uncertainty of the future uh, cash flow. The other reason is allow the user to evaluate the uh, liquidity. Uh, financial flexibility and profitability and risk means we they are able to um, do different type of ratios in other words this is what it is it also helps to calculate important ratios current ratio to assess the liquidity so that's the other thing uh, uh, that we could do from our statement of financial position going forward um, you have seen them before assets that are differ in type or expected function example inventory versus versus capital asset when we're talking about assets we're talking about all type of assets we're not just talking about current asset we're talking about capital asset we're talking about long-term assets we're talking about property plant and equipment uh, and equipment intangible tangible we're talking about different ones so then these are some of the examples of the assets we have current assets we have long-term investment property plant and equipment intangible we have a tangible we have other assets and same thing we are we have for the current liability and long-term liability we're going to be talking about each one uh, each of these uh, group uh, group uh, uh, group of accounts that what goes under the current assets when we think of a current assets is that what are some of the current assets current assets are 
um, cash and other assets expected to be realized within one year. So any asset um, we realize on the balance sheet uh, within one year from the balance sheet date or within a normal operating cycle. Sometimes we don't have the uh, calendar year. Sometimes we have a different operating cycle. So current as assets are something that uh, will be realized within one year. Now, what includes in the current assets? We normally have a cash, short-term investments. We have a receivables, inventory, and prepaid expenses. Those are all classified under the current assets. Now, um, when we have a, uh, when we have a, this is a, like an operating cycle there, there for a manufacturing company. So what we do is you manufacture a product, you sell that product, cash comes in, use that cash to purchase it, and then we, we manufacture it again. So if it's a manufacturing uh, company, this is their operating cycle. So you manufacture, manufacture the products, you sell them to the customer, the customer pays you cash, and then you use some of the cash to pay the merchandise, the cycle, the cycle goes on and on uh, the, uh, till, we, till we make the products, till we sell it, and then we get the money back. When we think of a current asset, the first one is your cash. Cash is what is sometimes cash and something that is equivalent to cash. They are um, they are also cash. In other words, we can have a cash, demand deposits, short-term liquid investment, anything that can be converted into cash quickly. That's what it means. Liquid investments convertible to known as a cash amount. Now, sometimes any known restrictions to availability of cash must be disclosed so anything that is there that we we cannot convert uh, for some reason maybe we cannot open the gic it's locked in so needed we needed to um we needed to d disclose those restrictions if there is any now uh, the next one that comes under current assets is your short-term investment so any any investments, you could have a debt investments or equity securities are presented separately from the other assets. They are valued at cost slash amortized or fair value. Uh, we are going to be learning about fair value net income investment. That's what they're talking about in here. Receivables, when we sell something on credits, it, it sits on our, on, on our statement of financial position under the current assets. Amount should be, uh, it says the amount should be uh, reported separately based on the nature of their origin or their different type of receivables. There's trade receivable, there's interest receivables, there's different type of receivables. So they, they should be separated. And then uh, if they're separated, disclosure is required. So that's what we need to do is disclosure is required. Why do we do it? Sometimes we have a receivable in order to, we, we pledge them as a collateral to get more money uh, from the bank. So if we have a customer that hasn't paid and it's a million dollar customer, we will pledge that customers to, we'll take it to the bank. So what we had to do is every, anytime that money comes back from that customer, it goes to uh, towards that collateral. Or if we don't pay uh, our, um, um, if we don't pay our uh, loan um, that we pledged, that we pledge for, uh, against our receivables. Um, if we don't pay it, they come after our accounts receivable. The next ones are inventory. So inventory, there is a different type of inventory. Now it's saying held for sale in ordinary course of a business. Sometimes some of the inventory we're using it in-house and sometimes we're, help, we're using it to sell it. So it's saying that we have to keep them separately. And some uh, in some inventory could be in, in form of material supplies or to be consumed in the production process or rendering a service. So those are the inventory are kept separate from the ones we're going to sell it to the outsider um, as part of our core business. When we talk about inventory, we have the if it's a you are going to be learning in your managerial accounting, we have a different type of inventories. We have a raw material that we purchase, and then that material gets uh, goes when we're producing a product, so it goes into working process. Once the process is done, the product is complete, then it goes to the finished goods inventory. So there is a different type of inventories when you have a manufacturing company. And how do we sometimes? Um, 
how do we record the inventory so i missed that this part uh, we record we there's a different method of recording our inventory or our ending inventory that's what we mean we use we could use fifo method we could use weighted average method or sometimes we we use lower of cost and net realized value for any method uh, we use to record uh, to calculate our inventory they need to be disclosed for our investors and our for creditors next one is a current asset that comes into appraisal prepaid expenses any expense that are prepaid means we paid it but we haven't used that expense so it could be most common ones are insurance rent advertising and prepaid supplies these are the most ones that are used in the business so uh, those are some of the examples of a prepaid expense now going those are all those were some of the examples of our current assets and next one is non-current investment so they are non-current so they're not due within a year they're due uh, they're due um, uh, they're held for longer than a than a one year so non-current investment normally consists of one of the following so it could be anyone uh, debt securities that you could have equity securities you could have a tangible uh, asset that are held as an investment or sinking fund so those are some of the example for our uh, non-current investments now any investment that held for extended period that's what it's called that's why it's called the non-current if it's for one um if it's for one year then it will be sitting under the current if it's not for one year then it will be sitting under the non-current and they they're valued at a fair value or they could be valued at amortized or an equity method so those are the three we are going to learn that in in chapter nine so we are going to learn about all about investment uh in chapter nine so we are going to learn about amortizing we're learning about equity then we'll be learning about other things so the next one that we we are going to go in with is that um so the next one we're going to talk about is the property plant and equipment so when we talk about property plant and equipment anything uh that are tangible anything that we can touch has a physical presence physical tangible assets used in ongoing business operation of the business to generate income they're normally reported at a cost and they are amortized cost. So they could be land could be reported at always going to be reported at a cost and then other ones are uh, other assets are amortized. So that's the thing that um, we are um, uh, we are going to be learning about in property plan, how to amortize them. Um, now, now IFR allows for valuation at a fair value most assets are depreciatable except for the land so land never depreciate the other assets are depreciated now ifrs if you record any asset under a fair value then you have to do an impairment you have to do an impairment at the end of the year so any asset that are recorded at the fair value they needed to be impaired um, they need to be tested for impaired so uh, now going further when we think about when we think of this one was tangible tangible asset anything you can touch becomes a tangible uh, anything you cannot uh, that becomes intangible intangibles are capital assets without physical substance held to generate revenue they're also going to be generating revenue but however there's they're without any physical substance um, they have high degree of uncertainty um, includes what are some of the intangible assets you have patents you have copyrights franchise trademarks and trade names those are some of the examples um, of your intangible assets intimate intangibles are grouped into two categories now when when we do it two categories because we need to separate them some are amortized and some are not amortized so if the if you have an intangible with affinity life it means there is this this is not going to this asset is going to be good for uh um in for finity life and then some are infinity so that's what there's those are two words indefinite and affinity is there has a life and we amortize over the life whatever the life is of that asset those with indefinite life not amortized we if it's they're going to be around forever then we don't know how long to depreciate the asset for or how to amortize it, how long to amortize it for so that's why it's, there's different type of that we need to keep them separately um and if you're keeping them separately then the first one you amortize the second ones we're not amortizing it but we're, we're both are tested for impairment at the end of the uh end of the year they are tested for uh, impairment now going further 
um, going further with the or um, my pen going further is saying goodwill. Goodwill may be a acquired in a business combination when you try to own a business and the goodwill is calculated the purchase price and the price uh, the purchase price and the value of the company difference between those two are normally goodwill goodwill are not amortized anymore it used to be amortized over 40 years but not anymore but they're tested for impairment some of the some of the items other assets what are some of the other assets if you cannot put in the criteria that we have we have tangible intangible and then we have uh non-current and then we have current assets if you cannot put it in any of those categories then those are these are called un uh they are called un uh, other assets if you don't find we can't find the category of it now there are assets in the special funds so non-current receivables any deferred income tax assets means you're deferring uh, you're deferring some of your income taxes and then the, if any property that are held for sale means you're not going to use it in a business but you're going to be selling it any property like that you get advances to this you give advances to the subsidiaries they are one of the those are part just some of the examples of the other assets but they are uh, sufficient information to be disclosed to inform the users of the nature of the asset when you have these kind of assets you needed to know what, how, what the nature of these assets because anything you put it in and then they uh, if they cannot connect it that means that we needed to uh we needed to disclose it so they are aware of the nature of the assets now those are some of the assets the next one you're coming up with the current liability anything any liability that any obligation that is due within a year uh, from the date of the SPF or within operating cycle, whatever is longer. Some of the current liability will be your, you have a payables, any accounts payable, you have accrued liability, any short-term financing, any derivatives. Derivatives again will be in chapter 16. So these are uh, and other liabilities to be paid with the short term. So you could have a current liability that can be converted into short term what that is due within a year. So uh, that is my current liability. So now we we working capital, you know, you probably seen it in your corporate finance course. Uh, any when we look at when we look at a working capital, we look at current assets minus your current liability. That is the working capital why do we need a working capital it is a key indicator of company's short-term liquidity uh, not usually disclosed we don't this is for internal purposes it's not disclosed to the outsiders often calculated by banks so they don't come and ask you what is your working capital they're going to work it out you're going to give them your statement of financial position from there they're going to take your current assets they're going to minus the current liability they're going to work out what 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 you're dealing with what what your working capital is so they they will uh they will calculate it themselves you don't need to uh calculate it it's not part of the uh, requirement then we're going sorry uh going forward with our questions, I had something on my screen, so I just was trying to kind of erase that, but it did not work. So let's go forward after the current liability. What we have is long-term liability. That is not due or that is not paid within a year. It will be called, um, it will be called a long-term liability. So anything that is not uh, expected to pay within a year, they will be called a long-term obligation. There's three type of long-term liabilities. When we think of it, obligation arising from from a uh, from bonds, example is bonds to, from uh, from financing situations uh, such as bonds, and then it could be mortgages um, or could be any loans. Those are obligations that we have. Then we have obligation from ordinary operation of the business. That is just a pension. Uh, pension you are going to learn in chapter 19. So now employees are working for you. You're going to owe them uh, when they retire. That is called the pension. So we have an obligation. The other one is uh, you will learn warranty. Product warranty is third when you stand behind your product. Chapter 13, that is also an obligation when you stand behind your products. There's two type of warranties. There's a, a service type warranty and assurance type of warranty. Um, when we're talking about product warranty, we, we are talking about an assurance type of warranty. And then there's a service type. There's two type of warranties. SF presentation required reporting the portion due within the next year as a current liability. 
um, when you're when you're when you're preparing a statement of financial position or a balance sheet anything that is due within a year is required that you put them under you move them from the short term uh, from the long term to the current and that you also learned it in chapter uh, chapter 13 in your reporting too. Uh, shareholders equity under the shareholders equity there's quite a few accounts goes into shareholders equity the first one is capital share when we talk about capital share we're talking about uh, uh, when we talk about capital share we're talking about so when we talk about capital share um, exchange value for issued shares so when we when we issue shares we could be issuing um, uh, preferred shares or we could be issuing common shares so when we issue shares they go under the uh, capital structure disclose authorize so we need to also disclose how many shares we authorize how many we issued it and how many are uh, and the outstanding amount so that's what we needed to do so how many we allowed to issue them how many we actually issued uh, so that we needed to disclose it so both for preferred and for your uh, preferred for both preferred and your common shares contributor surplus is normally reported at one point but we do need to do a schedule because what we're doing is we're repurchasing our own shares when we're issuing shares and repurchasing our own share contributor surplus uh, goes out of that uh, uh, contributor surplus is created and it's a one amount and it's usually reported as a one amount included issue share premium so that it includes issued share premium uh retained earning is the amount that is undistributed so anything we accumulate within the business that we don't give it to the shareholders it is called it's retained in the any earnings that are retained in the business called that retained earning and presented as a one item this was the new one that we learned in last chapter accumulator other comprehensive income any unrealized gain and losses on a fair value investments or any uh, foreign exchange uh, transactions uh, they go through the uh, accumulator other comprehensive income and from there from the we transfer them from our uh, income statement to the we close them out to accumulator other comprehensive income so remember we had a topic of a heading of other comprehensive income there is there, this since this sits under on our income statement of income uh, statement of income statement then anything that is in here we close them where do we close them we close them to accumulate other comprehensive income now going further is saying other required discloses contingency it, ASP and provision for IFRS any contingency that we have we needed to disclose them for uncertainty so anything that uh, has a contingency that we're going to lose in the future uh, we needed to disclose it um, for, and then any any uh, any gains loss contingencies are recorded gain contingency are never recorded so if you're going to lose money in the future you need to record them and you have to disclose them and then if there is going to be a you're going to be gaining some money it's never disclosed uh, and it's never recorded because you're not sure um, not you're not sure if the gain is going to be 100% because with contingency we never 100% now there, there's accounting policy when you're doing um, when you're providing your statement of financial position significant accounting policy and method chosen by the management so any policy you do you're doing a double declining declining method or a straight line or units of production or you do capitalizing the interest or you are um, uh, expensing the interest any of those policy what you need to do is you have to disclose them any contract so any con contractual situation in any obligation that has terms and conditions so if you have a contract that a contract is expiring uh, in two years from now or three years from now those contracts if there, there's an obligation you need to also disclose that and then commitment that requires specific actions or maintain a working capital at a certain level if a material so um, those are also um, contractual situations so you needed to you needed to disclose them now sometimes what happens is, is subsequent events condition that occurred after the statement date if you already 
produce the statement but anything that is going to happen after that date they are called subsequent events and they need to be also disclosed now when we when we think of tech techniques of disclosing it like we said that it needs to you need to provide extra information um, on, on any number that you have it on statement of financial position uh, in the body of the statements anything that is in the body of the statements you needed to uh, you needed to disclose it so that the 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 whoever is the users um, the users can uh, can make the decisions according to after reading the disclosures this is the other one that you may have seen the statement of cash flow but we're going to be doing cash flow statements in this question in this chapter there's two methods of it first we're going to see what is a statement of cash flow to assess the firm's ability to generate cash and cash equivalent so what what does it does it assesses the firm's ability it allows comparison of operating performance and cash flow from different entities. So it allows the comparison of operating performance and cash flow from different entities. When we when we doing a cash flow, just the name of it, it says cash flow. We want to know where the cash is coming from, where the cash is going, and the changes in the cash balance. So that's a statement of cash flow. Now, going further, when we have it, we learned a little bit about it earlier. There's three activities when we talk about three main categories. There's three main categories. There's operating, investing, and financing activity. When we, these are the three activities in, doesn't matter if you're using a direct method or indirect method, those are the three categories. And um, they under operating, investing, and financing. When we think of an operating activities, anything that is, um, that is current so you could have a current assets you have current liability anything that is part of the operating that will be that will be your uh, current um, any current activity will be goes under the operating when we think of investing where are you putting the money in other words your long-term and long-term asset and investment when you we're saying where are we putting the money so where are we buying assets uh, long-term assets or we selling them if you're buying and selling and these the long term it will go under the investing financing is who's giving us money are we getting money from our loans bonds uh, any type of long term in other words your long term debt and you, who who else gives us money your shareholders gives us money common shareholders your preferred shareholders gives us money when they give us money we also have to pay them dividends so anything that relates to long term debt your common shares preferred shares and dividends they go under the financing activities now just uh, just to if you look at it uh, just going further uh, this one is this inflow money if the money is coming in it's an inflow if the money going out it's a cash flow now like i said that we have three activities we have operating investing and financing um, these two activities are exactly same under the both methods the only one is difference and that makes the difference is that operating activity is different so now what happens is then when we are when we are doing it when we're doing a presenting an income statement when we what kind of income net income we have we have a cruel net income so first we needed to uh, reconcile that income into a cash income so when we have a net income that is come from the income statement we get a net income we need to adjust that in net income why do we need to adjust it we have to add or subtract any non-cash items that are on my that is included in here so we have to adjust that and then the when we think of a non-cash item so if i think of it any depreciation that's a non-cash items any depreciation any any losses on a disposal any gain on a disposal those are all non uh, non-cash items so then we needed to adjust them by adding it or we are by subtracting it so when you think of an if i think of an expense expense we have to we deducted it so we have to add it so if you have a loss that is treated like an expense you have to add it back if it's a gain you have to subtract it so that's what we mean by any item that is there uh, to balance our journal entry we call them non-cash items so that's why we need to reconcile it and then once you adjust the non-cash items then you have an income that is your cash income so then um, then you have to then you have to work with this cash uh, income 
then this is your cash income you have to work with this income to produce your uh produce your uh prepare your not produce you have to prepare your cash flow statement so that's what they're talking about you could be and that's when you're talking about inflow the money is coming in outflow is the money going out um so same thing with the there this is the cash flow flow the money is coming from all these activities the money is going out of those activities so that's what what we mean by inflow is money coming in from all the activities the outflow is the money that is going out of the outflow so when we think of a cash flow statements there's two method of preparing them first one is a direct method the other one is indirect method and some students find the indirect method easier than the direct method uh, but what we needed to do is we'll do the easy one first and then we'll do the uh, little bit harder one the first one is this is the example of an indirect method so when you have a when you're preparing a cash flow statement what you need is you need current year's income statement that's what you need your current year's income statement and you need a statement of financial position what you need it for two years so the current year and the year that is gone by so current year the year you're producing your cash flow statement and the last year so you need two years statement of financial position and you need a current year's income statement so when you do that we have some additional information that is given to you um, that relates to the uh, statement of financial position and and your income statement from there we needed to um, we need to calculate our our cash so these are additional items so first when you're doing it we are going to do, be using an indirect method when you're doing an indirect method first what we are starting off with is we started with the 75,000 that is the net income that income is an accrual net income so first thing we're going to know do you what well, first thing we need to do is we need to adjust it how are we going to adjust it we need to adjust it by adding and subtracting so in this case let's see what do we add first so when you are saying for the for first one is for the operating activity adjust the net income of 70,000 on an accrual basis to the cash basis so this 70,000 is a cruel basis net income we need to add it how are we going to how are we going to adjust it so you start with the net income and then what you're going to do is you're going to add or subtract any non-cash items so the first one you have to do is a depreciation expense so depreciation expense is a non-cash item how do we know how much is the is the depreciation so what are we going to do is you're going to look at your property plant and equipment from there you will know how much is your um, how much is your uh, this is these are the net amounts of course um, property plant and equipment um, it, it's a net amount so how do we know what is the depreciation sometimes they tell you in the question sometimes it's not told in the question in this case we have a depreciation that is given to us what you're going to do is you add back the depreciation then you look at it as is there any gains and losses if there's no gains and losses then that's the only non-cash item and then what we have is we have a net income that we started off with you add the depreciation and then you have a cash net income from there you are going to look at your current assets and you're going to look at your current liabilities those are the two activities you're going to look at because they are part of your operating activities when you have an operating activity those are the operating activities you're looking at it so your current assets and current liabilities when you look at it the, the, the theory behind it if you think of it if if you when the way to think of it if your current asset is going up if the current assets is increasing that means you're buying it and you're paying cash for it if your current asset goes down means we're paying for our liability so they they work if you if you're paying uh paying your liability money is going out so in other words if if it, if you're if you're selling your inventory money is coming in or any current assets if the current asset goes down money is coming in it's an inflow if the if the current asset is going up that is an outflow going with the li current liability they work opposite of your current assets when we think of it um, if your current liability is going think of an accounts payable if you have an accounts payable what is an accounts payable it is a liability if it went down that means in order for it to went down we had to pay cash for it it went up means that we're using we have somebody's goods that we haven't paid for it so current asset you what you look at it first thing you're going to look at it increase in that account or decrease in that account cash we don't we never touch till the end so cash we don't touch till we are and that's the balance that we're going to work on 
at the end we're gonna come up with the 61,000 first thing we have it in the current assets is your accounts receivable and inventory those are my two assets I'm gonna take my 45,000 and I'm gonna um, difference between the both is 45 minus the 86 the difference is 41,000 it is an increase if it's an increase then what we have to do is we have to minus it so if it's an increase in current assets all you're gonna say it increase and then it is an accounts receivable how much is the increase the increase is 41,000 so if it's an increase what you're going to do is you're going to minus it inventory what happened to your inventory it went down that means we sold the inventory so we have a decrease in inventory and the money is coming in so money is coming in that will be a positive how much is the positive it will be 20,000 a positive now land is not a current asset so operating activities anything with a current then we go to our accounts payable that is my current liability what happened to our liability? it went up if it went up that means that it is a positive number for us because we have somebody's goods that we haven't paid for it so we have goods and we can generate revenue from those goods or we don't have to pay we have somebody's uh, goods so in this case uh, it is a uh, it is 12,000 so we're going to add the 12,000 and it is an increase where it's an increase is it's an accounts payable now if you add them all together all the activity that will be you could have a net inflow or you could have a net outflow uh, from operating activities so from operating actors so what do we mean by inflow and outflow if your number is positive then it will be an inflow if your number is negative then it will be an outflow from uh, operating actors so all you have to do is add and subtract and then that's the number you are going to get if that's the number you're going to get so then in this case they told us the in the question it was in the answer it this would be ninety six thousand so that's the first one then with the second one what you're looking at is is the your uh, second activity you it doesn't have to be financing or investing the other two you could uh, you could put it in any way you can so uh, i'm gonna see if i could uh, kind of move this up because uh i needed to go to your this is how we show in other words cash flow from operating activities you start with a net income and then you reconcile the balance and then adjustment so in other words you make an adjustment for the non-cash items so these adjustments you could have a, these adjustments are non-cash items first and then the only non-cash item here is a depreciation so and the other ones we dealt with the current assets and you dealt with your current liability and that is your operating activities the next part of the activity is my investing activity then what we look at is we look at it a long-term liabilities uh, sorry long-term assets so we could be buying an asset or we could be selling an asset i'm going to do it here and then i will take you down to show you the other one because i didn't have enough room so now the next one is the heading will be what what will be the heading the heading will be investing activities so when you have an investing activities you could be buying an asset if you're buying it the money is going outflow if you're selling it the money is coming in it's an inflow so now if you look at it what we are looking at a long term we're looking at a long-term asset so we have two things here we have a land and we have a property and plant so land what happens is it was zero and now it's hundred and fifty thousand. So what did we do? We purchased land. So in this case we purchased land. In this case, uh de now it says December thirty first, twenty purchased land with a fair value of hundred and fifty thousand for hundred thousand in bonds. So now we needed to know is this a cash? Now uh, if this is a cash flow statement then it is uh, it, it should be shown if it's not a cash flow statement uh, if it's it's not required any cash so we don't need to do anything. So how you going how you going to know how how you going to connect both of them the way to connect both of them is by showing it so now if i do it this if i show you with the t account so we have a bond payable and we have a land under the land we started off with the zero what happens is our balance is 150000 so if we purchase the land how much we purchased it for 150000 so that's your debit so my debit is my land how did we pay how did we um, how did we get this bond what we did is we issued what we issued a bond 
um, which is for hundred thousand so that is my credit per entry doesn't balance so now we had to if we bought something uh, for hundred fifty thousand we issued a bond and then it also impact my cash my in cash will be fifty thousand so that's how we would have done the entry so if you look at it you debit the land credit your bond payable credit your cash so the only activity in your cash account is fifty thousand so in this case we will say purchase land how much the land was purchased for purchase land and the money is going out how much is going out by fifty thousand so now we already dealt with this account now we needed to see what else is happening with it now december 31st 20 so now then the next one is your property plant and equipment so now if you were to look at it i'm just going to raise what i did with the uh, with the land and building uh, land and uh, bond so now i'm going to look at it we're going to look at a property plant and equipment what's happening in your property plant and equipment so we started off with two hundred thousand so that's what we started off with and then we know that we're going to end up with the three hundred thousand these are the net amount so when we think of a net amount we also have a accumulated depreciation account property plant and equipment minus your accumulated depreciation is your net net amount so net your net property plant and equipment this is shown as a net we know that accumulated depreciation when we do a depreciation expense entry you have a debit the depreciation expense entry credit your accumulated depreciation oh, it was thirty thousand dollars this thirty thousand will be in my property plant and equipment if you were to say that it will be in your property plant and equipment in order for us to know how do you do it in the if i were to do that if they're showing as a net amount my accumulator depreciation will decrease my property plant and equipment so i debit the depreciation expense credit the accumulator depreciation account since we don't have an accumulator depreciation account it will go through the property plant and equipment so now did we bought something yes we bought something how much of the equipment we bought if in order to do that you add these two numbers and you subtract the two hundred thousand so i take the three hundred thousand I'm going to add the 30,000 altogether my uh, the change was 330 minus the 200,000 so we would have purchased a, a property and plant and equipment for 130,000 so this is my purchases now sometimes if it doesn't make sense what you have to do is see if you put in the right numbers so how are you going to do it you take the 200 plus the 130 minus the 300 from it 30,000 from it should give you an ending balance if it gives you an ending balance we know that we purchase what else we purchase we purchase a, a property plant and equipment so how much did we purchase it for 130,000 so anything investing activity is your long-term assets so you could be long-term assets or long-term investments it, it could be uh, you could be buying it or you could be selling it if you're buying it money is going out if you're selling it money will be coming in in this case as we only uh, we're only buying it we're not selling anything so there's no inflow there's only outflow here now then we have a net you could do it and in net inflow or outflow so how do you know if it's an inflow or outflow from investing activity again if it's a negative number then it will be an outflow if it's a positive number it will be an inflow in this case if money is going out it's an it's an outflow so net um sorry net uh outflow from where what activity are we doing we are doing an investing activity so this is my investing activity that will be my hundred and eighty thousand we did the first one which was the our balance was ninety six thousand if i'm not mistaken so the balance was sort of ninety six thousand and that was a inflow so that was a inflow from where from my operating activity i shouldn't have raised it but i didn't have a room so i didn't have a choice to do that so normally if it's a positive number it's an inflow if it's a negative number it's an outflow and sometimes they use a uh, they also said it provided and used so that's the other words that we could be used now we are going to go to our next activity which is called the financing activity when we're talking about a financing activity we're saying who's giving us money 
you're looking at long term debt, you're looking at your common shares, you're looking at your preferred shares, you're looking at any type of dividends the company is paying. So the first one we are going to look at is bond payable. When you look at your bond payable, we want we only dealing with cash flow. So you only deal with uh, with the cash. So in this case, what happened to the your bond payable? We know that we have a bond payable, right? We started off with bond payable. We started off with what? We started off with a zero. And now we know that we are going to end up with the 200,000. But you remember we bought the land. When we bought a land, what we did is we debit the land for uh, 130,000. Uh, no, not 130,000. Land was for 150,000. Uh, land was 150,000. We have a bond payable that was for 100,000. And we had a cash that was for 50,000. So we also have to keep track of what's happening in our bond payable account. So this one was the transaction there. But now if you, if you look at it, we had a, we started with the zero. We know this one was 100,000 and but we needed another 100,000. So that that is coming from here. We issued a bond, 100,000 bond. So if I were to do that, I issued another 100,000. So um and hundred thousand what will be my entry debit the cash credit will be your bond payable for a hundred thousand so if you post this you don't need to show the entry if you post this entry what's happening to your cash account money is coming in so if money is coming in so what you're going to say is issue issue bond payable and how much is the money coming in? 100,000. So that's where the money is coming from. Money is going out and money is coming in. In this case, the money is coming in because we issue the bond and your entry will be debit, the cash and credit, the bonds payable. So we already dealt with bond payable. Next one is your common shares. So the question told us that we issued common shares. So then next one will be issued common shares. How much we issued it for 30,000. So that's your next one. Going forward, now, didn't tell us anything about uh about uh, dividends so they they did tell us actually dividends are paid fifteen thousand so they told us they will be paid the dividend and that will be your dividend payable that will be uh uh we paid it so dividend paid so sometimes bond dividends are not shown i will show you in the, in the other questions at the back of the chapter questions there are some questions where bonds are not dividends are not given how to calculate them so now if since there's nothing on uh statement that we we crossed out everything in the in the in our income statement and a balance sheet because we started with the 75000 we crossed out everything but if you think about it i want to show this if you have a retained earning we started off with the 95000 we had a net income my net income was 75000 and we know that we are going to come up with 155000 at the end so you take the beginning you have a beginning retained earning you add your net income you minus your dividend in this case our dividends was 15000 and that will be equal to your retained earning at the end so we balance that too so that way we dividends were paid how much dividends were paid they were paid for uh, 15,000 so that's how much they were paid now going forward so now we when we worked it out at the end so now we have to balance it if you look at it we never touch our cash account so that's what we're balancing it when you're balancing that account so the first thing you're going to do is net net changes so this is your net changes when we have a net change you could have a net increase in cash or decrease in cash so if it's a number is a positive that will be increase if the number is negative then it will be decrease in what in the cash so when you're looking at it you're going to be looking at all the three activities in this case oh we, we forgot to do this so we have a net uh you could have an outflow or inflow so in this case we have an inflow because the positive numbers are higher so i'm just going to put it in we have a net inflow from where financing activities so 100 plus the 30 is 130 uh, minus the 15 it is your 115 and that is a positive number the way i look at it i have a number a i have a b and c those are my three activities after your three activities you're going to put them together a b and c 
you're going to take 96,000, you're going to minus the 180, you're going to add the 115,000. So when you do that, you could have an increase or decrease. In this case, we have a positive number and that is your 31,000. Then what we next thing we need is beginning cash um, balance. So we are going to look where are we are going to get that? We're going to get it from our balance sheet or statement of uh, financial position. So we're going to start with the beginning balance, which will be the balance of 2019 in your cash account. My screen is a little bit hung, so I'm going to, oh, there. So in this case, it is, we start with, the, if you look at it, the beginning balance is 30,000 and the ending balance is 61,000. So when you're looking at that, you add the 30,000, the, which is your beginning balance. And then you are going to come up with an ending balance and that will be your 61,000. Uh, so if it's, this is the balance you will come up with the, in your cash account. In other words, we already given a balance. We're just adjusting that balance. So that's what we are doing. Now our next part of the um, question that next part of the presentation is uh, this is what we already gone through 11561 we already did this now there's like I said that there's two methods of cash flow one is to prepare there's two method of preparing cash flow the first one it was indirect method the other one is direct method now it's the same information what we're going to use it for the same information is used to to calculate the cash flow using the direct method now like i said we said that before there's three activities operating activities and then we have investing activities and we have a financing activity it does not matter uh, your answer will be for the 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 these two activities your answer will be same doesn't matter if you choose a, if they you use a, a direct indirect method to arrive to it or indirect method to arrive for it so then the the part here is the these two numbers does not change. It doesn't matter which which method you use. The only thing changes is the operating activities. They are different from the, the they are different. The operating activity is you will get the 96,000, but how you arrive to that 96,000 is different. So you have investing activity and financing activity. It doesn't matter. These two answers will be exactly the same. Now we have to come up with the number of 96,000 using the uh, drug method of um uh, of preparing a cash flow so let's go through the questions uh it's the same questions and then uh for and and come up with the ninety six thousand. so in this case all the extra information is still there so we needed to uh worry we don't need to worry about those things at this point because we use all those ones when we uh created our uh when we created our um our cash flow using the indirect method so of course any cash flow you start with the name of the company the name of the statement and when are we doing this and it's, it is for december 31st 2020 so now first thing is we are going to do an the heading of the um of our statement is operating activity so uh that's the heading of the operating activities now uh, like we other one we started with the net income we're not going to start with the net income in this case we are going to go through each of the accounts and each of the accounts gets connected to your balance sheet and only the current all all the activities uh, uh, we're going to be using all the all the in accounts and income statement and your current assets only the current assets and current liability so that's what we're going to use to to come up with an operating activities of 96,000 so when you look at the first one the first thing you always start off with cash sorry the cash first thing is we have a cash received from customers so cash received from customers what what are the two accounts you're connecting you're connecting your sales revenue and you're connecting it to the accounts receivables so those are the two accounts that you're connecting it so it's it's nice to put it in a t accounts if you think about it accounts receivable normally have a debit balance so we started off with 45000 and then what we're going to do is we're going to end up with 86000 so that's the beginning balance and the ending balance so this is my beginning balance and this is my ending balance they sold um, their 
sales revenue was 580,000. If this their revenues was 580,000, we're, we're saying that unless it's mentioned in the question, all sales are credit sales, then what we need to do is we needed to know how much we collected. So in this case, we needed to know how much we collected. So what you, how you're gonna do is 45,000 plus the 580,000 minus your 86,000 should give us what we collected from the customer. So in this case, you I, I just I submitted the uh, zeros, uh, the three zeros. So then the, the part we are gonna come up with is 539,000. That's what we collected from the customer. So this is my X. So what we, if, it's, if you're collecting it, that means that money is coming in so this is uh, this is how you're gonna get it the so then you gonna you're gonna use all the accounts in the uh, income statement and the current assets and your current liability now when we look at it or um, when we look at our cost of goods sold cost of goods sold normally connect to the inventory and accounts payable those ones are the ones you're connecting it to so then when you're looking at it the second one is cash paid to suppliers we're going to do the suppliers first and then what we'll do is we'll do this separately um the salaries and wages expense we'll do that uh, separately so let's uh, deal with the uh, first what we're going to do is we're going to deal with our inventory and my accounts payable and my cost of goods sold so that's what we are going to do that so when you look at the you are connecting it to the two accounts that you're connecting is your inventory and you're connecting your accounts payable so when you look at the inventory we have a beginning balance in your inventory the beginning balance in your inventory was 120,000 the ending balance in your inventory was 100,000 in order for us to sell it your cost of goods sold is 300,000 we have to purchase something before we could sell it so we wanted to look at is how much we purchase so in, in other words we want to know how much we purchase if we purchase it we have to connect it to accounts payable and see how much we uh, how much we we, we paid uh, to the suppliers how much we paid to the suppliers so now let's look at it so then in this case you're going to take 300,000 plus the 100,000 um, minus your 120 that will give you the purchases 300 is your 300,000 plus your 100,000 that's your ending balance minus the 120 gives you how much did we purchase so then in order for you to double check if you did the numbers right you could just put it in together then another way to check this number your beginning balance in the inventory was 100 Twenty thousand. You purchased two hundred eighty thousand. From there, you sold three hundred. Your ending inventory left with a hundred thousand. So you have to check if those numbers are correct. So, one twenty plus the two eighty minus the three hundred gives you hundred thousand. That's the ending inventory. Now, if we purchase it, we want to know how much of this purchases were cash purchases and how much what was on credit. So then you look at your accounts payable. We started off with fifty thousand in my my. So we taken care of inventory with accounts payable. We started with the fifty thousand. We're going to end up with the sixty two thousand. But we 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 did the purchases. So that's my current year's purchases. So you have a beginning balance. You have an ending balance. Your current year's purchases are two hundred eighty thousand. So then fifty plus the two eighty minus your sixty two will give you. 268,000 that's what we paid this is what we paid if you look at it now paid will be be debit the accounts payable and credit your cash how much is going to be 268 what are we doing to the cash account where cash account is going down so this is how we are going to pay cash paid to the supplier so um sorry it was 268,000 that's how much we paid to the supplier now we already taken care of accounts payable. We already taken care of cost of goods sold. Now gross profit, we don't need to deal with it because that's a subtotal. The next one we're dealing with is salaries and wages expense. What we're gonna connect it, we're connected to the account that is my pre, uh, will be my accrued payables accrued liabilities or salaries and wages payable in this case we don't have any if we don't have any we know that uh, we know that uh, we paid all the salaries in cash so whatever cash we the cash 
salaries were paid cash paid for paid for salaries so that's the the amount will be 150,000 that's how much we paid for the salary so we know we taken care of that now my next one is depreciation expense that is a non-cash item we don't need to touch that now the next one is your income tax income tax this is an income tax expense what we need to connect that income tax to your income tax payable if there is no income tax payable that means we paid cash for that too so we have a cash paid for income tax so that's what we are doing it we're paying for income tax and the amount is twenty five thousand. so now if we come up with it we wish we should come up with the ninety six thousand. and how are we going to come up with we should have a 96 so you go ahead and work out the numbers i'm doing it as we go so minus your 150 minus your 25 i got a 96 so again the answer is exactly the same it will be net cash outflow from operating activities operating activities in other words this is the only number is different than your cash flow from investing activity that we did before that is exactly the same it will be from investing activities that will be your 180,000 and then what we have is 115,000 that is for your uh, financing activity so then all I'm saying is the these two how you arrive to these two doesn't matter from direct method to indirect method the only thing is difference is your operating activity so that is difference under the direct method and the indirect method so that is the only thing that is different so this is how they said it so cash received from customers we got 539 and then they said all they said is they put it this together so cash paid to the supplier and employees they put it together per i separated them but at the end you sh we should be separating them uh, but then the author is saying that they are putting it together which is okay to do it i'm not saying there's anything wrong with it but sometimes it's nice to see it uh, visualize it and see it in a different way now when we go forward uh, we're going to go usefulness of the statement of cash flow what does a why do why is it useful uh, to prepare a statement of cash flow it provides creditor the useful information about the company such as Companies' ability to generate net net cash from operating activities, net cash trends or patterns in the operating activities. Do we have a, a positive cash flow? Do I have a negative cash flow from the operating? Operating deals with your current activities. If it deals with current activities, that we, we needed to deal with operation. If it deals with operation, that's our day-to-day -day activities. Whether the cash flow are renewable, renewable or stain, sustainable, can they can they be renewable or can they be stained where they are? Now going further, financial liquidity, current cash debt. Now this is they're talking about the ratios. When you have a current cash debt to ratio, indicates company's ability to repay its current liability from its customer so in other words uh, that's your current cash uh, current ratio tells you that how your ability to your ability to repay your current liability so then then the next um, the the next heading they're talking about is the next uh, ratio they're talking about is net cash provided by operating activities so whatever net cash uh, we we have from the operating activities if we take an average of our current liabilities that is equal to your cash debt coverage ratio so there what they're looking for is current cash debt coverage ratio that what you have to look at is whatever we we come over the ninety six thousand. then you have to divide it by your average current liability when they talk about average you have 2019 current liability you have 2020 uh, liabilities current liability you add both of the liabilities together and you divide it by two so in this case you take the years the current liabilities of your 2019 current liabilities of 22 you add both of them together and you divide it by two to get your average current liability and then 96,000 divided by that to that gives you 
current cash debt coverage ratio. So then that tells you the company's uh, um, company's ability to pay uh, for their current liability. They, they want to do they have a ability to pay their current liability. Going further, we have a, a, a perspective when we talk about perspective is the patterns in other words cash flow patterns there may be useful patterns identify identify of cash inflows outflows from operating investing financing and now when we did three activities when we prepare our cash flow what Ali does is it, it, it's a it is a useful pattern so then it we can compare it from one year to another year when we next one is you free cash flow you will see it in your corporate finance class uh, how do you calculate it the calculate as net cash flow from operation less capital expenditure and dividend so we cal we calculated um, we ca what is your free cash flow you have a cash flow from operation means cash flow from operating activities what you're going to do is you're going to minus the capital expenditure so whatever they uh, invested into capital assets and dividends and that will give you free free cash flow um it also or it, it, free cash flow also indicates dis discrepancy cash flow cash flow left to invest or to expand to make additional investments so whatever free cash flow we have is it, it indicates so that how much money we have how much free cash we have what can we do with that cash flow we can you can you can buy additional investment you can uh, pay off your debt or you can uh, you or it to add it to its liquidity so those are the things that we could do with our free cash flow after we pay for after we come up with the operating activities those are um once we paid for your capital expenditure and once we pay the dividends to the shareholders that's the free cash the company has they can invest anywhere they want not anywhere they want anywhere the company would like to invest so in this case statement a comparison of IFRS and SP. This is that they're showing you how you recognize the uh, how you recognize under IFRS and how you recognize under SP. That's all they're saying. And the same thing with your IFR and SP. The only difference is that under when you when we think when you look at IFRS current versus non-current liability show as a current if no rights to defer payments. Uh, of a financial liability beyond one year as so now if 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 it's a current liability it's something to be due within a current year you cannot put it under the long term you have to move it from the long term to the current ratio that's the requirement for ifrs um under the aspi it's a, they're a little bit uh they're a little bit uh lenient when it comes to that if um uh, you if you want you can uh, look at my recording for chapter 13 um with how to uh how uh, it is when you have a short when you're refinancing your long term debt with the short term debt so how you refinance so the part we want you to do is to learn refinance when you're refinancing it what we want to do is we want to improve our current ratio anything is current we want to move it to the long term the only way to move it if you have put in an agreement uh, so that's what happens shows as a non-current if debt has been refinanced so it shows as a refinance by the date issue of of the balance sheet so soon uh, be, before anybody can see the financial statement if if the agreement is put in a place then if the if the liability was non-current it will stay as a non-current where this one is a little bit a little bit harder to do because uh, the agreement has to put it in before the year end if, if it's done before the year end and there's an existing contract then you they can stay as a long term otherwise they have to be moved to a, a short term and when you think of a cash flow the only difference with an IF for an SP is your investments so investments and the interest and dividends under the IFRS even though we know that interest and dividends may be classified as operating investing or financing depending on the question itself so 
if it's a dividend we know that we, we who do we pay dividend to our shareholders and who who are the shareholders they are giving us money so then they go under financing but if we invested somewhere somebody else is giving us the dividend they can also be in my investing activities or it could be my operating activities same thing with the interest but under asp if they if they if the assets if they're sitting under current assets or current liability they can be put it in under my operating uh, operating activity we don't need to worry about putting into investing or financing now disclose disclosure of the cash flow per share information is allowed it is prohibited means um there is no we don't do that in other words it's allowed here but we don't do that under the asp uh, and then date of financial statement authorized for issue must be disclosed and there's no requirement a date of financial statement authorized for issue so there is always a date when we should issue our financial statement um it has to be disclosed to the public under here uh, when we're ready that's when we'll uh, well that's when we issue our 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 statement of cash flow so that this is the chapter number 5 where uh, we talked about cash flows there's different type of cash flow also we talk about statement of uh, um statement of financial position uh, for the uh, or another way of saying a balance sheet from the ASPE point of view thank you so much for listening to me i will see you in the class if you have any question please send me an email or you can um you can uh, send a message on the youtube video i will reply to message thank you so much take care and bye for now